hand kick, like a butterfly kick. Three points for a valid kick to the head. Five points for a valid turning kick to the head. And of course, one point's awarded for every gamjan given to the opponent. Okay. Here you can see it's really good. Our, the data system nowadays is amazing because you can see what got scored, not only by the things next to it, but it'll clearly show a punch. Um, for the body kick, you'll see the hogu here. And for a turning kick, these numbers will either show up next to the hogu or it'll show up next to the um, headgear if it's a spinning head kick, okay? And then obviously the head kick just shows a, the headgear. These are also great for when you're the TA and you're keeping track of points, because if you get behind, let's say they're just scoring a bunch of points, you can see on the side of the screen going down exactly what has been scored. Okay, permitted techniques, punching criteria. Oops, I'm sorry if that's been on my screen. I'm looking at this screen and I didn't even see that that was up there, I apologize. So punch criteria, power and accuracy, right? But remember on power, you want to determine if it's the little kids, if they, you know, they're not going to punch as hard as, of course, our heavyweights. So you definitely want to, if you see that nice, tightly clenched fist, they're using the front knuckles, their arms extended, be sure to score it if it's a nice, solid punch. Remember, a punch is valid even if it's on the side of the body on the scoring area. It doesn't have to be directly to the front. As long as it's a nice, solid, extended arm punch. Um, any type of foot technique is allowed, except of course for attacking with the side or bottom of the foot, having the knee pointed out. We'll talk about that later, the, mon the monkey kick and, and the fish kicks. So the permitted area, the trunk area above the hips and, and includes the sides again. So it's including this whole area below the white line here, okay? So anything below this line and on the sides is a valid scoring area, okay? The permitted area is also, of course up here at the top, it is permitted, it's just not scoring. So if there's a punch in the white area, it is permitted, it's just not scoring. Um, but there cannot be anything on the spine. That's the only area that you cannot kick directly to is the spine, okay? The throat and neck are not a scoring area, but it is a permitted head area, as long as it's a kick, right? They cannot punch, of course, to the throat. But if there's a kick that's received to the throat or the neck, it's not scoring, but it is permitted, okay? Of course, we'd probably call Keishi, call the doctor, if it's really hard. A lot of times when they kick the throat though, even a, a toe or something will usually touch the face as well. So here the head, the entire head above the bottom line of the head protector here. And then the trunk, the scoring areas is anywhere above. Like we said, the throat is permitted, but it's not scoring just from here and above, okay? The blue or red colored area of the trunk protector is a scoring area below this line and all the way around. So again, if they punch the white, it's permitted, they're just not gonna score. Okay, weigh-ins and inspection. Okay, so we have our general weigh-ins and then we have our random weigh-ins, okay? So on the general weigh-in, everybody must weigh in, okay? And these will always be the day prior to competition. We always have two certified referees, two males and two females doing the weigh-in. You always want to have someone with you. Never weigh in people by yourself. Always make sure you have a counter um, referee with you, okay? And the duration is two hours. Of course, this is for WT. Um, maybe local or national organizations might change that up, but generally it should be two hours. Um, during the general weigh-ins, they get two attempts. So if they come right at the beginning and they do not make weight, they can come back anytime during that two hours to try a second time. 
but it must be within that two hour time frame. Okay. What is checked? We check the maximum weight as well as the minimum weight. We actually do have people that fall below the weight category. So I generally keep a weigh-in sheet with me or something so that I know the minimum weight and the maximum weights of all of our categories. And taping is not allowed ever in general weigh-ins. We need to see if they're injured, if there's any bleeding. So there can absolutely be no tape. Okay, tolerance. There is no tolerance for the general weigh-in. The one exception I would say now is the cadets and juniors must be weighed in in underwear. And the girls will have, they can have sports bra, small shirt on, okay? So they will never weigh in in the nude and they are given a hundred grams tolerance, okay? Um, documentation, accreditation card, ID, passport, or official document with a photo. Okay, always make sure that the person you're weighing in is the athlete that will actually compete. Make sure you check their credentials to their name. It's very important to make sure you check the line Okay, have them sign that their weight is correct. And then you will also sign as the referee. Okay, sometimes athletes will have the same name. You will have two athletes with the same exact name. Make sure you show them, make sure you point it out, make sure they see their name, everything there and that they sign off on it. Because if one of those is incorrect, you can mess up all the bracketing for the next day. And then there's a lot of people that are not gonna be happy, trust me, so. Take your time when you're weighing them in. Even if you have a lot of people, don't worry about rushing. Take your time to make sure it's accurate because that can really affect the next day if they have to stop the competition and rebracket. Okay, then now we have our random weigh-ins, um, which is all the categories except the heavyweights. Of course, they don't have the random weigh-ins. Um, random weigh-ins is we're trying to keep athletes from cutting weight. So if Usually um, in the morning, they will just randomly select like 20% of the athletes and it will get posted and they will need to come in and get weighed in. Um, generally, if they've been cutting weight really hard and they make weight, they might gain a lot of weight in a real small period of time and swell up due to water consumption or food. So we're really trying to be careful and the random weigh-ins is helping a lot. Um, when is the morning of competition? Recommended one hour before the start or at a max two hours before. Okay, it's instant. As soon as they show up, we're gonna weigh them in. They only get one attempt. At the random weigh-in, they just must, they must make the weights. Only the max limit is checked. Um, taping is allowed, but it must be like the regular taping um, signed off, okay? not excessive taping, but taping is allowed. If they've already gone to medical and got taped for the event and it's signed, no problem. The tolerance here is, for, is 5%. Okay, so you take the weight category and you times it by 1.05, and that is gonna give you the weight that they, the tolerance that they can have. Remember, it's of the category. Let's say you're weighing in the minus 49. It's gonna be 5% of 49. It's not the weight that they weighed in, okay? We don't care what they weighed in at the day before. It's just 5% of the weight category, okay? Here we can see, um, we check the data magnet tester. Um, we try to have these on hand. At every event, we need to always be checking the magnets. This is super important. We wanna make sure that athletes aren't adding any um, magnets into their, if they are missing magnets, it's okay. If they have less, it's okay. We inform them because maybe they're fighting at a disadvantage so maybe they're gonna to wanna to go purchase new ones, but they cannot have any additional um, sensors. So here, this is the Gen 1 socks. We don't see these as much anymore, but they have seven, one, two, three, four. One on the side, one on the bottom, one on the heel. This is the one you'll see most times nowadays is the Gen 2, and there is 11 sensors. One here, three on the top of the foot, one in the toe. You'll see one here in the back, on the heel, one in between, on the side, and then this one in the toe. This is the one that tends to be missing a lot of times. They've just kicked so much it fell out, so.
Okay. When you're doing inspection for the athletes, make sure the contestants are wearing WT approved DOBOC, belt, sensor socks, and protective equipment. Again, if you're at a local or you're at your, your refereeing for your national, some of these things may be different. These rules are WT driven. So of course, know that you always wanna follow your m and um, rules, okay, for this. But if WT, we do ensure, um, and all of these are on the website. If you need to know which brands are approved, you can always go to the W website, WT website, and it's all on there. Um, at our events, we use a metal detector to find out if there's any unauthorized metal items worn by the contestants. A lot of times we'll check to see if maybe they have a belly ring, any other piercings that we can't see, we will take the metal detector down and check. Um, nowadays, you can even have them stick their tongue out. Sometimes they have a tongue piercing and that can be really dangerous as well. Um, ask the contestants to knock on their groin guards and check to make sure they are being worn inside the Dobok pants. Please do not let them come out and be competing and it's on top of their pants. We see that a lot. So you definitely wanna make sure. And remember the groin guards are for female and for male. Both have groin guards. Check if the gloves and sensor socks are in good condition, especially the Velcro, including on shin and arm guards. Make sure it's not coming loose easily. If the Velcro is not working properly, the contestant must use tape to fasten the Velcro. If you have a specific place um, where you're doing inspection or if it's in the ring, if you're doing inspection and send it before you send them out to the ring, try to have tape, ask the medical. Because then if you see that it's already coming loose, try to tape it up before they even go out to the ring. This helps a lot when we're centering so that we're not having to constantly um, stop the match because it keeps coming undone. If it does happen while you're in the ring, you can always have them in between rounds, go have medical, tape it for them. Um, of course, you're checking the number of sensors, which we already showed. Um, KPMP sensors shall be verified by the KPMP staff. They actually have kind of a thing that the person just steps their foot on and it reads the sensors. It's a little bit different than the data. So check for finger and toenails. Um, make sure they are cut short and all sharp edges are filed off, even though this was done at the weigh-in. So nowadays what we do during our weigh-ins is we have them we have them cut their toenails and their fingernails before we will weigh them in. If you're a referee, just have maybe an extra pair of clippers in your pants. I always take them with me. Um, it's just a good way to get that done so we don't have to worry about it on the day of competition. So that weigh in is really nice. Thank you. So if we do this at the weigh-ins, it saves a lot of time on competition day, okay? So really try to make sure that they do it there. But obviously, once they step into the ring, it doesn't take long just to do a second glance to make sure that that happened. Because obviously, you don't want any injuries. Make sure the contestants are not wearing any jewelry, plastic rings, or even friendship bracelets. And a lot of times, we'll, I'll see um, necklaces. They just forget. No bobby pins, nothing sharp in the hair. Um, contestants with long hair must tie it up with the elastic band and tuck it underneath the headgear. IR is doing inspection, must remind the contestant that the hair cannot be coming out from the top of the headgear and covering any part of the headgear. Also, long hair cannot be sticking out from the back of the headgear. As a guideline, there should not be more than 10 centimeters of hair hanging out from the back of the headgear. Um, to stop this right away, make sure that athletes, even before the match starts, when they're coming out to the mat, you can always walk over to them and have them tie it up. If you see it's down, make sure they tighten it up tight before you start because it's you don't want it to keep coming out while you're refereeing during the match, okay? A lot of times though, if you're doing inspection, please make sure this is done in inspection before you send them out. Make sure their hair is tightly fastened up. And the hijab must be long enough to tuck inside the collar of the dough box. They must, they must not be held together by metal pins. Dobok pants cannot be rolled up from the cuffs. Okay, so they cannot be rolled up from the bottom. The contestant must roll up the waist if the pants are too long. They have to do it from the waist. 
to have the pants come up. There cannot be any, if they walk into the ring and the bottom of their pants are rolled up, we need to make them undo that. There's only one correct way to tie up the PSS chest protector, and that is from the top to bottom. The very first one must cross, and then from there it must cross all the way down. They can't run it down. Um, they can't go straight down and then cross. It must cross immediately and go all the way down. It must be tied up snugly and centered on the contestant. If you tie it and those strings are super long, just do another tie. Make sure that they're up so that way they're not slapping around when they're fighting. Um, always check the accreditation of the coaches. The coach can be accompanied by the team doctor, physiotherapist, chiropractor, or athlete trainer. His or her accreditation will be checked at the same time with the coach before entering the field of play. So anytime you're in inspection, make sure when you have that sheet and you're actually checking them in, go ahead and check their accreditations. Make sure everything looks correct. Make sure they're in the correct HOGU. Okay, right on the math sheet, it has who's Chong and who's Hong. Make sure you have them in the correct that they have the correct hogus on, the correct size. You wanna make sure when they go out to the ring, everything is ready to go. Be aware of um, WT Medical Committee guideline for mouth guards, taping and bracing. This is really important um, that you check their tape for any taping, the mouth guards and their braces. Cadets wearing a face shield must also wear a mouth guard. So even if they have a face shield on, it doesn't matter. They must have a mouth guard. They cannot fight without a mouth guard. Okay, so the mouth guards must be white or transparent only, a minimum thickness of three millimeters, rigid or semi-rigid sports mouth guard, not flexible. You don't want them to be super flimsy. It needs to fit nice and tight up in their mouth. Um, no night guards that are meant for night grinding or teeth whitening. Um, with, if they have braces, they need a full mouth guard covering upper and lower teeth. Okay, sometimes they still show up without that bottom. They must have them both covered if they have braces on both. Um, full upper and partial lowering covering at least eight teeth. So if they have a full upper and then they have one on the bottom that covers the first bottom eight, that is okay. Or they can have a full upper and then sometimes they have that tube that runs all the way across. Um, without braces, covering all the upper teeth, okay? Full mouth guard covering upper. It's okay if they wear a double, but normally they won't if they don't have braces. So here on some of these, you can see, um, I can hear, this is not going all the way up. It's just falling and it looks very thin, okay? <laughs> Here they have the mouth guard up top, which is not wide or transparent, as well as it doesn't look like their bottom braces are covered. This one is only covering four teeth. So again, it's very important to check everything. I have, I have here, are the, here are the tubes that I was talking about and you will see that they run these over their bottom braces. Those are okay. Also the double mouth guard here you can see. This one is full and goes all the way up to the top. So you wanna make sure it goes all the way up to the top and is not halfway covering their teeth. Um, I was at one championship where they were using like Invisalign. It was a very thin one. It wasn't my match, but the gentleman, while he was fighting, he sucked it into his throat and they had to call medical. And thank goodness they finally got it out, but it's very, very dangerous that we check those and make sure they're correct. Okay, taping, they can have up to two layers of foam under wrap, up to four complete layers of taping, two millimeters for an injury, up to two complete layers of taping, one millimeter for support, um, one extra anchor strip and one extra side hinge strip is allowed and not counted in the four layers above. The color needs to be white, light brown, or beige. We don't wanna see, some of them have that really bright colored tape. We don't want any of that. No abrasive tape is allowed to be exposed. No taping of the knuckles or the fist. So here you can see incorrect, okay? They're covering their knuckles around. So this is not okay. 
Here you can see the correct taping, all their knuckles are open and exposed. It looks like it's the right centimeters and then you can see the ankle support here. And they can have a soft padding or gauze pads can be used. Um, it's allowed for a contusion, bruise or hematoma. Sometimes they have a bruise, so they're covering it with a light pad, okay? It must remain soft when wrapped with up to two layers of tape. Only two layers of tape are allowed on the forefoot and the arch. Padding must not cover the toe or ankle. Okay, so you can see here, it's just very thin and it's just covering if they have maybe a bruise or something going on there. Of course, this would be incorrect. Okay, bracing, no hard substance, metal, plastic, Velcro strip, et cetera, is allowed. Only soft neoprene material is permitted. So any bracing, um, you wanna make sure that it's very soft. Silicone or other soft gel padding around the kneecap may be permitted as long as it is soft material and the thickness is less than six millimeters. So you can see here, these would not be correct. They have big pieces. These could cause a lot of injury, right? As they're competing. But any of these would be allowed. Here, there's still a circle here, but it's soft. Okay, so these are nice, flexible. These are all okay. Nothing hard. Perform inspection duties with dignity and honor. Even when we get put into inspection, we're still doing a very important job. Never see it as you're being pulled out of the matches. Okay, we all take turns, especially female referees. Sometimes we have to do it a couple times. It's fine, but you wanna make sure it's, it's just as important a job as weigh-ins, as being the center referee, as being a corner judge. Okay, it's so important that we ensure that everything is correct and before they head out to the um, mat. It's, it is a very important job. Keep updated with the WT approved equipment. Um, report any irregularities to your referee chairman, or if you have any questions, whoever is in charge of the tournament you're at, Always go, always go up and just ask the question. WT, again, they print their recognized brands. This is 2019. I went on the website and they don't have the newest one um, down the PDF at the moment. So this is the old one. I'm assuming they're updating it. So but here was the ones from um, 2019. Okay, competition basics. So most of us know the contest area. I won't go over this very much. Okay. You can see here, mostly we're using this octagon. Now, all of these are like 3.3 .3 meters. Okay. It's still considered an eight by eight, just as this one is. And then the whole competition area must be at least 10 by 10, but no larger than 12 by 12. So it's really important as a referee when you go in, of course, we go to a WT event, it's done for you. But any other tournaments, always just count and make sure you have eight by eight when you're counting out for the contest area, okay? And then with the safety area, it should be about 10 by 10. Duration of the contest, three rounds, two minutes, one minute rest. And then of course, if there's a tie, we have a third round, the golden round. I know there are some new rules coming out. I will not be covering those tonight because they're still doing um, events right now. They're testing, they're doing test events. And as soon as those are published, they start getting seminars, we'll update our rules, but we don't wanna print things until those final rules have been settled, okay? So, so for now, I'm still gonna go over the golden point round. Okay, TA assistant. Sometimes when people are the TA, you need to take this just as seriously, okay? It's super important. The TA takes care of the TA paper and match sheets. TA must record all the points and gamjons in real time. So a lot of times if you're writing on the back of the paper each round and then you can transfer it up to the front. If you see a back kick, you put a four. If you see they gave a gamjon, you put it and add the plus one to the other side. You do it as soon as you see it. There's a head kick, you right away write a three. The reason for this is if there's any mechanical problems, the system goes down, we can rebuild the match. So you don't want to wait till the end of the round and just write the points. You want to be keeping track always in real time. And then when the when that round ends, 
then turn go back to the front of your paper and then write in your scores okay they work very closely with the computer operator and ring volunteers help make sure the time started on the right time the penalties are recorded correctly timeouts everything is recorded correctly so you're watching a lot of times you're working with them so when you see that a gamjan is given you're writing it on your paper you also want to glance over at your um, computer operator and make sure they've applied it to the correct person or that they've started the time or stopped the time. Um, you check to ensure the players are wearing correct size hogu. So as soon as you get that sheet, you need to look and identify the players. Um, make sure that they are in the correct hogus. The PSS, the PSS hit levels are in the machine. Sometimes nowadays those are automatically loaded in. Sometimes you have to do it yourself. So it just depends on the tournament. So make sure you're aware of what the PSS hit levels are for the divisions. Um, also at the end, the TA must circle the correct winner and decision of each match on the TA sheet. Sometimes when you're looking out on the floor, Chong and Hong is switched, right? So be very careful. The wrong player has been circled before just because you're looking at the screen that's on the floor. So it's usually easier if you look at the computer and the computer operator because they're in the correct order. So here you can see this sheet, Chong and Hong. Of course, here you put the points. Anytime you write the points here, you use a numeral. So a three, um, 10, whatever that might be. For the Ganjans, we just use tick lines, okay? Just straight lines. And then here we add the extra points from the Ganjans and you write your totals in here. Here is obviously your decisions, which we'll go over later, referee stop contest, if they won by the point final, point gap, golden points, superiority, withdraw. So you have to circle um, how they won. We always keep track of who was the referee, judge one, two, and three, in which country or which state, if it's local. This is important because if any coach has a complaint or maybe something happened in the match, um, somebody has a question, they can pull that match sheet and know who to go back and ask. Okay. If it ends up by M superiority, here's where we put that in, which we'll go over later. These are for video review. Um, if it's for technical point, adding three points, adding five points, whatever they're asking. Okay. So here would be for the first one, we either put it was accepted or rejected in these boxes. And then this is for the golden point round. If nobody scores, it goes down to number of hits, rounds one, and that will go over later as well. Always make sure you sign your sheet, and then always make sure you hand it to the video review juror afterwards. He will review the sheet and make sure it's um, correct and accurate. So again, teamwork, and then turn it in. Make sure you know how to do this paperwork. One of the worst things is to get to an event and your paper's a mess, or the wrong person circled, or you just don't know how to fill it out. Just practice or ask somebody. All right, so before we go into competition rules, I think this would be a good time to take, let's take like, um, let's come back at the hour. Okay, so it's 53 after, let's come back. Um, it's about seven minutes. Let's get a water break, stand up. That was a lot of information because competition rules will take a little while to go over. Um, so get some coffee. I know some of you, it's very, very early. Some of you, it might be late, <laughs> so. Thank you, everyone. Let's take a break real quick.
All right. Hopefully everybody had time to stand up, get their brains fresh again before we start again and dive into the competition rules. Um, try to stay on time so that we can finish right on time today. Okay, so again, remember, if you have any questions on the rules, please feel free, just write them down. And at the end, we're going to allow questions. Okay, it's kind of hard to interrupt while we're given the presentation, but definitely 
um, we can ask, feel free to ask any questions. Again, we're only using the current competition rules until the new rules go into effect. And at that time, then hopefully we'll get those out as soon as possible once they've been finalized. Okay. Okay, so first we'll begin with crossing the boundary line. Crossing the boundary line, one foot entirely must be outside of the boundary line, okay? Um, if the player is pushed out, the opponent gets the penalty for pushing that you cannot be pushed out of bounds. Um, if both players go out before the referee calls Calio, both players will be penalized. That's usually um, a problem with the referee, right? As a referee, we need to, when we see them getting close to the boundary line, we need to make sure we get close to the action. And as soon as the first athlete goes out, we need to call Calio right away to ensure that the second one doesn't go out as well and get a gum john as well. So once you see them at that boundary line, try to make sure that you're close to them to stop them right away. You would hate to penalize both of them. Um, if Chong is out of bounds, can Chong score? No. If he goes out of bounds, he cannot come back and score. However, is Hong, if Hong is in bounds and Chong is out of bounds and Calio has not been called yet and Hong kicks and he scores, that is okay. Even though Chong is out of bounds, as long as Hong is in bounds, his score would stay. So remember even, so if this is the boundary line, just remember their foot must be completely out. Even if their heel, so if their toe steps down first and then their heel comes up and then it goes over, then they are out of bounds. So once that whole foot is lifted, they're considered out of bounds. And make sure you know if it's the alert area, because now a lot of times we have that very wide alert area, they must be on the outside of that alert area, okay? It's not that first line inside the alert area, it's all the way outside. So first we'll start with falling. Falling is any part of the body other than the feet touch the floor. Even if they lose balance, barely touch a finger and they keep going, you still must call falling, okay? Um, exception, if a contestant falls down due to the opponent's prohibited acts, ganjan is given to the opponent. So obviously if Chong is holding and Hong falls, if he falls due to Chong grabbing, you need to make sure that the um, ganjan goes to the person that's grabbing or he's grabbing him and pulls him down with him. Let's say they both fall, but it was because Chong was grabbing and pulled him down. Chong would get the ganjan for grabbing. And rule of thumb, if a player falls, give a ganjan, okay? Any, anytime a, a player falls, someone's gonna get a ganjan, whether it's the one that fell or due to a prohibited act. Um, one thing to remember is when time expires, no ganjan for falling down. This can also be, or at Calio, right? So when we say Calio, time stops, then they fall, no ganjan. It's just that they fall and then we say Calio, it has to be before Calio, okay? If both contestants fall as a result of an incidental collision, shin crash, crash, or kicking each other, no penalty shall be given and the wave and off sign will be used. That's when we put our hand in front, right, left, center. Okay. So if they if Chong kicks and they both fall, they still there's no ganjan. If neither kick and they both fall, it doesn't matter why. If they both fall, no ganjan. You just ask them to stand up. Okay. And then just Continue, queso, or make sure you do the wave sign and then queso. Um, if sin or referee trips one of the contestants by mistake and causing him or her to fall, the wave off sign will also be used. So remember, there's only two instances we wave. So if we accidentally trip one of them, then again, we do the right, left, right, the wave off sign, okay? Um, or if they both fall. Sometimes I'll see um, even if just one falls, but let's say you said Calio and then they fell. And then they'll do the wave off sign showing they're not giving a ganjan. We don't do that, okay? Only in those two instances do you use the wave off sign. They should automatically know we're not giving a ganjan if it was after Calio. So this has happened, so this is good to know. If both players fall, do an exchange of kicks or colliding, but Hong falls outside of the boundary line, Okay, and Chong falls inside of the boundary line. Okay, um, 
Center referee gives a gamjan to Hong for out of boundary line, and then a gamjan to Chang for falling down. So in this instance, they both fell down, but one fell down inbounds and one fell down out of bounds. So those are two different penalties. So they will both receive a penalty in that instance. Okay. So for falling down, there's really no hand signal, except you need to run in right away as fast as you can, get the other attacker away, make sure they're behind you, okay? And then you tell them stand up. A lot of times people forget to do the stand up. We wanna do that to get them to stand up right away, get on their feet so we can continue. Then you just give the gamjan, okay? But there's no hand signal, technically no hand signal. Okay, avoiding or delaying the match. Again, this is here twice. Make sure your fists are facing up this way. So one, two. Um, this is given if you're stalling or retreating with no intention of attacking. Includes turning the back or by bending below the waist or crouching. Okay, so if they turn their back, that is dangerous. They're open game to the other player. You definitely want to give a gamjan and tell them to fight. Okay. Um, five second rule, if we tell them to first, if they're both just standing there, we'll tell them fight. Then they have five seconds for one of them to attack. Um, we do this when they're stalling with no intention of attacking, not engage in style, inactivity, or moving backwards from original position for five seconds after fight command. So if we say fight, and then in five seconds, neither one of them have moved, you're gonna stop the match and give both of them a gamjan. However, if they're both standing there and let's say Chong retreats a step, then he's the one that's not engaging. We would only give it to Chong. We definitely try to only give it to one or the other so it makes a difference. If you give it to both, it's kind of the same. Um, we can give a, let's see, a boy, if a player asks to fix his arm or leg pads, the referee can indicate fight. So if they keep trying to stop the match due to things, you can just tell them fight. However, if you feel it's a safety issue, go ahead and just stop the match, okay? If I see anything hanging, especially their sensor socks, we must stop, right? Because then they cannot score. So if you see things or they're trying to show you at least, then go ahead and stop the match and let them fix their equipment. But if they just bend down and you haven't stopped the time, you can stop the match right away give them a gamjan and tell them to fight because that's very dangerous. Sometimes they're just right in the middle of the fighting. They'll just bend over and try to fix their equipment. Examples of intentionally avoiding the match, turning the back like we had talked about. Sometimes they'll even run away, okay? Once they run away from the attack, then you definitely want to give them a gamjan for avoiding. Bending below the waist level, crouching. Um, moving backwards, sideways, or around the clock. Sometimes people, uh, three steps or more. Sometimes people think that three steps is only when they're moving backwards. One, two, three. But actually, um, it can even be them going sideways. One, two, three. If they're just hopping around the ring, even once they do that three times, you can give a gamjan for avoiding. Okay, it doesn't have to be them just going directly back. Um, asking the referee to stop the match in order to adjust the equipment. Repeatedly jumping upwards or jumping in to avoid the opponent's attack. We need to make sure we call this. If they jump up once, sometimes give them the benefit of a doubt. But if they keep jumping, they're also avoiding. And sometimes they get kicked low. You don't want to give the other um, player a gom jump for kicking low. It's because the other player jumped up. It's his fault. So you can also call that and tell him to fight. Um, pretend an injury, exaggerating injury or indicating pain in a body part and that's subjected to a blow for the purpose of demonstrating the opponent's action as a violation. Um, we can ask for a video review. That's more for pretending injury. Um, exaggerating injury is more like they got kicked in the leg and they're really, you know, and they're trying to walk away, but it was just during an exchange. It's not something you would give a gamjan for. Just tell them fight. Try to get them to re-engage. Exaggerating pain for the purpose of elapsing or stalling the match time. Okay, grabbing. Grabbing is grabbing any part of the opponent's body uniform or protective equipment with the hand to gain an advantage. 
So again, any, any inside game, we're trying not to call the time, right? A little grab here, a little grab there. Um, they're just kicking. Nowadays, we're not stopping the match all the time. We wanna let them fight. But the, if they are clearly like grabbing the hogu and gaining an advantage from that grab, either for a punch, for a kick, head kick, anything like that, you wanna make sure you call grabbing, which is just your hand out and pulling in, okay? Um, grabbing or hooking the foot with the arm or leg. Again, a lot of times you'll see them hook and then maybe throw a punch. Again, that's considered grabbing. If one player is grabbing and the opponent is pushing to get away from being held, Gomjan is given to the player who is grabbing. Sometimes you'll see this in a clinch um, and they'll just stop the fight. But if one is grabbing and the other one is pushing, he's trying to fight, but he can't because the other one is grabbing. Make sure you call for the grabbing. And sometimes they're smart. They'll grab on one side and they'll be pushing. They'll pretend like they're pushing, but they're grabbing where you can't see. Um, so remember, light grabbing is tolerated. You know, just inside game, we're not trying to stop the match all the time, unless they're clearly gaining an advantage from the, from the grab. Um, no animal kicks. Anytime there's any contact, if they're doing a fish kick, a monkey kick, if there is anything touching, they are going to get a gamjan for grabbing, okay? It doesn't matter. Even if, let's say, Hong is touching Chong and Chong does the does the monkey kick, Chong is still gonna get the ganjan for grabbing, even though Hong is the one touching. If they do an animal kick and there's any contact, we call for grabbing. Um, sometimes they'll grab the shoulder straps in a clinch. Um, no squeezing, no controlling or moving around. Sometimes when they're clinching, you'll see them kind of squeeze in and they're moving the athlete. That can be considered grabbing as well. Um, no wrapping the arm around the opponent's neck, of course. Um, sometimes you'll see them curl their leg around the opponent's leg so he can't move. That can be considered grabbing his, or misconduct. But we don't see this as much now because we're immediately stopping. This was back when they, we let them clinch for a little while. Um, nowadays, as soon as they clinch, we immediately stop the match, separate them and continue. So we don't really see this as much. Um, no holding opponent's leg while clenching. So now we've come to pushing. So if Chong pushes Hong out of bounds, the Gamjan would be for Chong. So you, again, you cannot push the player out of bounds. However, you have to be careful with this call because if they push and they kick, they're actually trying to fight, okay? If there's any question, always give the Gamjan for out of bounds. Um, the coach has a card, he can video review. So if he's pushing and kicking and then the player goes out, so you have to kind of be careful. Just if it's a clear push, he clearly pushes him out of the bounds. Um, Chong pushed while Hong is attacking and the kick has not been completed. So the kick has to finish. It either has to touch the hogu or even if they're doing an ax kick and it lands on the shoulder, that is considered completed. Then they may push and it's legal. But if the kick has not touched yet, you cannot push. Um, Chong pushes and Hong falls, that's legal, right? Hong would get the gun done. Any other time it's legal, they can push, just in those two instances. Okay, lifting the leg. This used to be really confusing, but I think nowadays everybody pretty much knows this rule. I don't think it's a question anymore. So if you lift the leg above the waist and you're kicking for more than three seconds to impede the opponent's attacking movement. So by three seconds, they must sit down. They must set their foot down, okay? Even if they're making contact, it doesn't matter. If they're kicking and they're making contact, um, but that leg stays in the air for more than three seconds, they, it'll be a gamjan, okay? They must set the foot down and then start again. And then clearly that is just an X. <clears throat> Sometimes you'll see where the athlete, they'll just slip their leg above the, above the knee and set it back down, but then they don't follow up. That as well is a gamjan. And this third one is the one that they get confused with. So also if the player hops twice without kicking or extending the leg. So remember the three second rule is, at, is if they're actually kicking. And um, the hops forward means that their leg is tucked in. They have their leg up, but it's tucked, but they're not executing any kick and they just hop. So if they hop twice and then they kicked and scored, 
you would give a gamjan and also um, take away any points that were scored. <clears throat> Lifting the knee in order to kick is not penalized. Sometimes you have to um, be careful. Sometimes lifting the leg. Sometimes they're actually gonna execute a kick and they're not, but this should be under blocking actually. So I will fix that. It is tolerated for the foot lifting as a fake in motion if it is done just once between the ankle bone and the knee. So they can do one checking motion, but then after that, once they do a second one, they must follow up immediately. Okay, so we give them the benefit of a doubt. If they check once, don't automatically call a ganjan. The second time they lift that foot, they must execute something. If the cut kick is aimed below the PSS level without a follow-up high kick, ganjan will be assessed even if there is no contact. Okay, so once they get it above the knee, that kick, let's say it's slow, and then they, they must follow up immediately. which is above the hogu or the head. For any leg lift in once or cut kick motion, the low waist level, no gamjan if it is followed by an immediate attack, kick or punch, it can even be a punch. Once they lift that leg, as long as they punch, they kick, they're okay. Um, two cut kick motions below the PSS level is a gamjan. Because remember, once they do one low, they must follow up with a technique that is above the waist. So they cannot have two that are low. And again, that is an X. Even if they have made no contact, that is not a low kick because they made no contact. It's just that they've lifted the leg twice and they the second one must be above the waist. So it's the X. Um, attacking with the knee, again, you just lift your knee to your hand. We'll do some quick hand signals um, before we end so that we can go over all the hand signals for these. Um, Attacking with the knee is when they attack with the knee when in close proximity to the opponent. A lot of times you'll see this when they're clinching and they just bring that knee into the hogu. This is the one where you have to be careful because sometimes um, you might give a gamjan for attacking with the knee, but really some of them are really flexible and they can turn their knee in and actually execute a, a kick. Maybe they're trying to kick, but they cannot drive that knee into the hogu, okay? Um, lifting the knee to block or impede the opponent's kicking attack. If they lift that knee straight up and the opponent hits it, it is very dangerous. So you definitely want to call that right away. It's very obvious when they lift that leg up to block. Um, no penalty for inadvertent contact as a result of technical exchange. So if they're just attacking um, and it just happens, of course, you know, sometimes accidents just happen. You just have to see that they, the intention is to lift that knee for blocking. Attacking below the waist. This action applies to an attack of any part below the waist, okay? If unintentional contact below the waist occurs during an exchange, gamjan will be given. No, it should be no gamjan. If unintentional contact below the waist. So right now during an exchange, if, if they are exchanging techniques, um, we are not given a tap below the waist, okay? We do not wanna keep stopping the match. So this is wrong. So if they are, if they are exchanging kicks and maybe they're just hitting um, while they're executing kicks, we do not call for below the waist, okay? Attacking below the waist is if they come in and they just cut kick right into the leg, of course, that would be attacking below the waist, but be careful. Maybe the opponent is moving back and that's why it hit the leg. Maybe his intention was to go high. The opponent moved back and then it hit, hit the leg. Um, clear butt shots, of course, those are gonna be attacking below the waist. Um, strong kicking or cutting action to any part of the thigh, knee or shin for the purpose of interfering with the opponent's technique. Okay. So attacking below the waist, you also want to make sure um, if they hit once and it's low, and then the next kick they execute, execute is to the hogu or to the head. Once you give that gamjan for attacking below the waist, then you must invalidate those points. Okay, so if they do kick low first and then they do score up high either to the hogu or to the head, once you give the gamjan for attacking low, you must invalidate those points, okay? Any points that come after a gamjan, we must remove. 
okay, whether it be for grabbing, it doesn't matter what gone done. Anytime we give a penalty, we must remove any points that were scored after. Attacking after Calio. The timing of Calio shall be defined as the moment that the referee's hand signal was completely was completed, a fully extended arm. So remember, it's really important for us to get our arm completely straight, okay? If it's like this, it still is not gonna be a tech. Let's see where I can do this with the virtual, okay? A little bend, it doesn't matter. On video review, it is not a tech after Calio until that arm is completely straight. So you wanna make sure Calio right away is fast. And remember, it doesn't matter when you say Calio, all that matters is when your arm is straight because on video review, we can't hear you saying Calio. So you want the timing to be exactly at the same time. Calio right away fast, as well as stating it quickly, okay? Start of the attack is defined as the moment the attacking foot is fully off the floor. So if our arm is fully extended, and then the foot leaves the floor. That is attacking after Calio. However, if we even have just a small bend in our arm and their foot, even just their toe, as long as their foot has left the floor before we're fully extended, that, that attack is valid. So sometimes the timing on that can be really hard. If you're not sure if it was an attack after Calio, um, just let it go to video review, okay? That is one of the ones that sometimes you're rushing in and you're not quite sure if that foot left the floor beforehand or if it left after, if you're not completely sure that it was an attack after Calio, then you can always let it go to video review. But if it's clear that you said Calio and then boom, their foot leaves the floor, definitely you wanna call it, which is just here and then your X, okay? Attack after Calio. Um, hitting the opponent's face, which is here. Hitting the opponent's face or head with the hand, wrist, arm, or elbow. Okay. Anytime it touches the face, even if it was an accident, I've heard some say, well, I didn't give the gomjon. It was just an accident. I saw where one person punched and the elbow accidentally hit the opponent. It doesn't matter. You must call the gomjon. Okay. If they punch and it slides up and hits the face, you still want to give the gomjon for um, attacking the opponent's face. Unavoidable actions due to the opponent's carelessness are not penalized. So if they're going to for a punch and the person crouches down and they get hit in the face, of course, then it's gonna be the other one for avoiding, okay? They caused the hit. Attacking the fallen opponent. Fallen when any part of the player's body other than the soles of the feet touches the floor. So we talked about this. So once they have, once they have fallen, um, any type of connection, any type of kick, even if they trip over them, would be attacking the fallen opponent, okay? We must call that. Once they're on the floor, it is very dangerous. So we wanna make sure that we are calling, we give a kick and then an X. Gomshan should be given for intentionally attacking the fallen opponent regardless of the degree of impact. Even if they barely touch them, sometimes, you know, maybe there's points that's going to be scored. They touch the headgear. We have to give the gamjan for attacking the fallen opponent and then also invalidate any points that were scored. Okay. So it's really important. Anytime they touch the fallen player that we give attacking after Calio. However, this is a reminder. If they are falling and nothing has touched the floor yet, try to get in and stop the match right away. It's very dangerous. But if they're falling and they get kicked in the face, it is a legitimate attack, okay? There is no penalty for that, okay? There is no penalty for attacking the fallen opponent until something other than the foot touches the floor, okay? And next we have misconduct of a player or coach, uh, not complying with the referee's command or ruling inappropriate protesting or criticizing of officials' decisions, inappropriate attempts to disturb or influence the outcome of the match. Um, sometimes you can hear the coach, that was grabbing, it's okay. You know, if they're getting really involved in your match and they're trying to get in your head, you can just stop the match right away. You point to the coach, point to their athlete and give a gamjan for misconduct. 
Um, if you give them maybe a gamjan for grabbing and they're like, that wasn't grabbing, of course you can give another gamjan for misconduct. Um, provoking or insulting officials, let's see, unaccredited doctor, physicians, or other team officials found to be seated in the doctor's position. Any other undesirable behavior or unsportsmanlike conduct behavior that is not within normally acceptable limits. The coach is standing or leaving the one by one coach's zone. They must stay in their one by one zone. Um, we'll also give misconduct to a coach now if they request PSS test during the third round or the golden round and nothing is found wrong with the system. Okay, however, we'll cover that later in video review because we'll actually take their card for that. Points cannot score after an illegal act. Again, I had talked about this. So if they kick below the waist first, they do a double kick and the first one's low with contact and the second one is high in scores. We'll give the gamjan for the low kick and remove the points. Um, contestant steps out of bounds, comes back in and scores. Referee will give a gamjan for crossing the boundary line and remove points. In general, only one ganjan can be given to a contestant, even if the contestant has committed multiple infractions. So you always wanna pick the one that maybe they gained the most advantage from, okay? Especially if there's points associated with it. Um, two ganjans can be given with attacking after Kalio or misconduct. Those are the only two times we can give two ganjans. So let's say um, Chong was grabbing, you go to stop the match and then Chong kicks Hong. Okay, so you're gonna first give the gamjan for grabbing, then you're gonna give the second gamjan um, for attacking after Kalio, okay? Or again, for misconduct, like I said, if you give a gamjan for grabbing and they're protesting, you can then also give them a gamjan for misconduct. Um, the other way that um, we do give misconduct is sometimes attacking the fallen opponent if it comes as the second instance. Let's say maybe um, Chong was grabbing, okay? And then Hong fell because of his grabbing and then Chong kicked the fallen opponent. Because we cannot give attack in the fallen opponent as a second um, Gamjan, we would give first for the grabbing and then for the attack in the fallen opponent, we would give misconduct. That allows us to give two. And that's important because if we have to remove any points from when they were on the ground, okay? <coughs> so again, two gamjans to the same player. A contestant kicks below the waist and as the referee calls Calio, the same player kicks after Calio. So we kind of discussed the same scenario. Um, a contestant punches the opponent in the face and then says something appropriate. Um, the contestant falls down and pretends injury while on the ground. This one we didn't cover. So if, if a contestant falls down and is pretending injury while on the ground, you would give them first a gamjan for falling down as well as a gamjan for misconduct, okay? For pretending injury. The other one that we give right now is a missed hit during the golden round if a gamjan is given, but no points are scored, but a hit level is registered. So sometimes let's say the hit level is 25, and maybe they're only hitting at a 20 and there is a pressure. That's one of the criteria for determining the golden round, which we'll talk about later. Um, at that point, we're gonna remove, we're gonna give, if you give a gamjan for grabbing, even if there's no points, we must remove that missed hit or the, or the hit, okay? Because it did register and we wanna make sure that that doesn't count towards them for winning at the end of the golden round. Okay, knockdown procedures, how far are we in? Okay, definition, due to a strong, they are considered knocked down due to a strong impact of a kick or a punch. Sometimes people forget about the punch. If there's a strong punch and it knocks the wind out of them or a back kick, we need to make sure that we're paying attention to that. Um, staggered or move around unsteadily. Sometimes they're not completely knocked out, but you can see they're staggering, they're disoriented. Um, any bleeding or injury to the eyes, 
Okay. Ramjan for falling down in a knockdown situation. Falling down before Calio and we start a count. Okay. If if they then we would give the Gamjan. So let's say they get kicked, they fall down. We stop the match and we start counting. During that count, we have to always be reminding ourselves that they fell down. So once we get to eight, if they're ready to go, then we need to still give that Gamjan for falling. However, if they get kicked hard, we stop the match, we start counting and then they fall, of course there would be no Gamjan. Okay. If both players are knocked down, we continue counting as long as one of the contestants has not sufficiently recovered. Hopefully one will recover. I've never seen this. Um, if neither player recovers by the count of Yodul, winner is decided based on the match score before the knockdown. So here we'll go over the chart. These take, um, you can take a picture. Just remember, um, these are very good for studying before going to a tournament, okay? So let's say they're the head, body, or punch, and they're holding themselves, they're staggered, and it scores. So first, if we open an eight count, we're gonna count to eight. If the contestant, we always say fight, we have that if they have their hands up and they're ready to fight, and the contestant recovers, if they fell, we would give the gamjan, and then obviously just continue the match. However, if it's scored and we count to 10, they cannot continue. Then we would just declare, come on, and declare the winner. Okay, if they score, it's pretty straightforward. A knockdown procedure, not scored, okay, in an eight count. If there is no score and we count to eight and the contestant recovers, of course, we give the ganjan for falling if need be. Then we would do video review and then we would ask for the points. So if there's no score and we count to eight, then we will video review for them. Okay, and we'll ask for a permitted technique and a scoring area is what we asked IVR. Um, if, it's, if it's a head kick, of course, we would add the three or five points if it's accepted, and then we would continue the match. Um, if it was a body kick, of course, we're not gonna add points, right? I, uh, contestant recovered, IVR, permitted technique in the valid scoring area. Maybe it was the shin and not the foot. It wasn't a valid scoring technique, so it would be rejected then we would just continue the match without adding points. Okay, knockdown procedure for a 10 count if there's no score. Don't mind the D right there. Okay, so first we're gonna call the doctor. Okay, and then if there's no score, we're gonna ask for video review. We wanna make sure that it was a valid legal technique or even if it was a strong back kick, okay? We want to make sure it was a back kick, that it was a valid back kick. So again, if we ask for IVR, we're asking if it was a permitted technique in a scoring area. If it's accepted for head kick only, we would add the points. Okay. Obviously, if it was a back kick that did not score, but they were knocked out, but it was a valid back kick, then we would just declare come on and declare the winner. Okay. If we do the 10 count. We do the IVR and it is rejected. Let's say we thought it was a back kick. We counted to 10. Still always ask for a video review just to make sure it was a very good back kick. Maybe it was a low kick. Okay, since there's no score, we would want to review it. Okay, if it's rejected, if the athlete can continue, um, let's see if it was a back kick. It was a low kick. Well, if it was a low kick, right, we would give the other player a gamjan for a low kick, of course. And then we want to make sure that the athlete that got kicked low, if he can continue. If he can continue, um, of course, if it was due to Ilulu, there would be no gamjan. We would just say queso. So again, he has to recover. If it's a low kick, we would give the gamjan for the low kick. And then once the athlete is recovered, he gets the minute, then queso, we would continue. Um, if he cannot continue due to the low kick, then of course, the one that kicked low, he's going to get a ganjan for kicking low, and he's going to lose the match. You're going to declare come on and declare, declare the one that was injured the winner. If it's rejected, and let's say he can continue, 
he just doesn't want to continue after that point. Um, the other athlete already got the gum jump for kick and low. He would still be the winner because at this point, then this athlete is withdrawing. He just doesn't want to continue, even though he could. So this has happened before, which is why the rules are here now. Okay. So it's always good. If there's a 10, if you do a 10 count, there's no score. Just video review it just for the safety of you or for anything else, just to make sure that it was a valid, strong kick. Okay. Okay, for a strong kick, a medical suspension period for a concussion. Okay, for 14 and under is 50 days. Juniors 15 to 17 is 40 days and 18 and over is 30 days. So it's 30, 40, 50. If there is a se second concussion within 90 days, there's an additional 90 day suspension. Um, a third concussion, 180 day suspension. Mandatory medical suspension cannot be shortened. Okay, they must wait out this whole time. We're definitely trying to make sure that the athlete is fully recovered. Um, concussions are a big thing. We don't wanna see them getting multiple concussions, especially within a short period of time, and especially our kids as they're still developing and growing. Okay, injury timeout. As soon as you see a, maybe a strong head kick, or um, let's say, remember Keshi, they have to really be injured. They twisted and, you know, they dislocated something, they broke a bone. Anytime you need to call Keshi, we call the doctor first. Used to, we would call Keshi first. Nowadays, you wanna make sure you call the doctor. And once the doctor is on the mat, then Keshi, okay? That way the doctor gets the complete minute. Sometimes if we say Keshi and we're calling the doctor, um, we don't know how long it's going to take for them to get there. So definitely wait till the doctor gets on the mat, then Keshi. And it shall be called for bleeding or injury to the eyes. Okay, even if we're counting, we see any bleeding, we want to get that doctor there. And dislocation of a joint or broken bone, a twisted ankle, a kick to the throat or groin. Definitely if they get kicked low, even um, make sure you give them that one minute of recovery time, okay? Um, Keshi, Keshi injury time period starts when the doctor steps on the mat. So remember, pain is not an injury, right? We only call Keshi when it's a serious, or we think something serious has happened, or to recover from a thread or groin, because obviously those, they need some time. And tell the doctor the time beginning at 40 seconds, say in 40 seconds, 45 seconds, let the doctor be aware that you must um, make your decision within one minute. If the contestant can, can continue, but the doctor needs an additional minute, we can give an additional one minute. So we would say she gone and then Keshi for the second minute, okay? Um, but remember, we have to make our decision within the one minute. The second minute is not for us to make our decision. By the first minute, we should already know whether they can or cannot continue, okay? If they can continue and the doctor just needs to maybe finish up some bandaging, whatever, then we call Shigan and give that additional Keshi. So remember, pain is not an injury. So if they fall, they look like they're um, injured. They say Calio. Let's say they just got a strong kick to the leg, okay? And um, we're gonna tell them stand up. They have three seconds to stand up and make sure you give a full three seconds. Remember nowadays, the time, they watch the time that's on our clock, they can video review. You want to give them that full three seconds. Okay, if they don't stand up again, stand up. And then again, if they don't stand up, ask them to stand up. By the third time, if they do not stand up, the match is over, stop the contest, award the other one um, as the winner. Um, however, if he does not stand up, oh yeah, may call doctor the third stand up call if suspect may be injury. So before, so by the second one, if you tell them to stand up and you look at them and you think, I don't think that they're pretending. I think there, there could be something really wrong. If you're in doubt and you change your mind, just go ahead then and call the doctor and go ahead and get that Keshi. Because remember again, safety is always first, right? So um, sometimes at first you think they're, they might just be pretending or remember pain, they must bite. But after about the second one and you still, you think maybe there could be something 
really wrong, then go ahead and call the doctor and give them that cash leave in one minute. Let's see. All right, the golden round. We'll go through the golden round and then after that, we'll take a small break because I know that this is just a lot of information coming one after the other. Um, in the event the winner cannot be decided after the third round, a fourth golden round will be conducted. The duration of this round is one minute. The first player to achieve two points will be the winner, either through scoring action, two gomjons awarded to the opponent, or a combination of these, okay? If you give Chong a gomjon and Hong um, receives a point and then Hong does a nice punch, that would be two points as well. Um, the first athlete to achieve a score, it could be a roundhouse kick, it could be a head kick. Once there is a valid score that's, you know, obviously if they just punch, they must score a second punch, okay? They cannot win from just one punch. There must be two points for them to win. If they complete the whole minute and there is still no score, then, it, um, and Dato keeps track of this for you, the winner shall be decided on the following criteria. These are really important to know and you have to kind of know the order as well. Um, score to punch. So again, if they just score one punch within the round, they are not declared the winner. However, if the round ends, and nobody has scored, anybody who scored even just one punch is gonna be declared the winner. The next is the higher number of hits registered during the golden round. That's why this is so important on the missed hit. If we do give a gamjan for grabbing, we must also invalidate that registered hit for this reason, because it goes towards them winning this golden round, okay, if there's no score. The second criteria is who won more rounds in the first three rounds. And then the last one is who received fewer ganjan penalties during all four rounds. So always remember, it's, they received the least ganjans. In a golden round, if a PSS hit occurs, oh, we already talked about this, we'll wave off that PSS hit. Then if those all end up being tied, and trust me, it happens. I happened at a Grand Prix I was at, one of the finals, we still went to superiority card. So you still wanna always have a superiority card in your pocket and a pin just in case by some chance, all of the criteria ties. Then we still go back to our superiority cards, okay? And again, that's based on aggressive match management, greater number of techniques. Of course, we're not counting, but kind of in your head, you kind of know who's been throwing or executing more techniques. If those seem to be similar, they were both fighting, then who is doing more advanced techniques, maybe spin hooks, different things. And then the last one being competition manner. Again, you circle if you were the referee, judge one, two, or three. Circle either for Hong or Chong. And then the, you will bring your cards to the referee. And again, the referee will circle his decision. Judge one will circle there. You'll circle judge one, two, or three, and then your, the final decision, okay? Remember, if there's all four, if there's a referee and three judges, if a referee and judge one both say Hong, these two both say Chong, then whoever the referee chose gets an additional um, point. So whoever the referee chose would be the deciding factor. And um, a lot of times, but if we just use the two judge system, of course it would be two out of three. So again, always make sure you have these um, before you start a match. We already went over that. So at the end of the overtime round, the referee takes two steps back and says, Wusukaruk. The corner judges complete their cards, present them to the referee. And as I said, the referee will complete their card. Oh, we already did all of this. Okay, why don't we take a quick five minute break, everyone? That way we can stand up again, grab some coffee, grab some water, just to kind of get up and move around for a few minutes. Um, and then we'll come back and do the yellow card procedure. And then again, maybe you can, if you have any questions you wanna write down just to save for the end, okay? All right, thank you everyone.
One of the things, so welcome back everybody. Um, one of the things I'd really like to stress and just remind, even if you're a corner judge, you are just as important as the center referee. So if a, if a match goes wrong, it's not just the center referee, it's the whole team. Remember, if you if you give a, if a ref, center referee gives a gamjon, maybe for grabbing, and doesn't see that points went up, remember as a corner judge, you can stand up and help your referee before it's video reviewed, okay? If you see that those points went up, stand up, yell referee, ask for a meeting, then the center referee knows that you want them to call you in and just let them know maybe um, you called for grabbing and a point went up for a punch. However, if the referee's not sure, they think that it was a punch first and then a grab, maybe they won't do it, but always try to help um, your center referee. Um, technical points, anything that you can see, make sure that you stay engaged. Uh, maybe the center referee opens count and doesn't realize that no points went up. They get to eight and they restart the match. Okay, of course it's video reviewable by the coach, but if you're aware that they did not ask for video review, stand up and help your center referee. So as a corner referee, you have to stay just as engaged as the center referee. You're their eyes, you can help. Make sure Gom Johns went to the correct player. Um, even yourself, take your time, watch the scoreboard, make sure the Gom Johns are going to the right place, okay? But if not, and you see something happens and the center referee has started the match, you can stand up as well and help, okay? So always be a team player. The corners are just, and I know you're sitting, it's a little bit easier to kind of lose your focus a little bit, but always be focused on the match and help each other. Okay. Now we're gonna start with the yellow card procedure. I'm not gonna to go too in depth with this, just um, the basics. If a contestant or coach intentionally and repeatedly refuses to comply with the competition rules or the referee's orders, the referee may also declare a sanction requested by declaring a ganjan and raising a yellow card. So if they just keep, they're just not complying with what you're telling them, you give them a ganjan for misconduct, you can raise a yellow card. But remember, that doesn't mean the match is over, okay? If they calm down, you can continue the match. However, at the end of the match, you still have to write a report, okay? Or if the coach is just, you know, keeps getting involved and you feel it's serious enough to use a yellow card, you can at any time give a gamjan and show the yellow card. You, if they calm down, you can continue the match. However, if it doesn't stop, you can stop again, give a gamjan, second yellow card, you can stop the match immediately. But if it's bad right from the beginning, they're using swear words, they're coming into your ring, you can do it right after the first gamjan. Yellow card, you can stop the match. Again, that's your decision. Um, you wanna to report to the referee chair immediately with an official written report. You bring in your corners and the center referee and you write a complete report of what happened. Um, the competition supervisory board will investigate and determine if a sanction is appropriate. If an action happens after the match has ended, you can just simply show the yellow card, right? They're throwing down their equipment, they're swearing because they lost, whatever the case might be. You can just hold up the yellow card. Obviously the match is ending, you're not gonna give a gamjan. You just show the card. A yellow card is a very serious matter and should be used only as a last resort. Really try, hopefully um, you can get the coach to sit down. Once you point to the coach and give a gamjan to their player, a lot of times they will calm down. So, Try to manage the match. However, if you feel a yellow card is warranted, don't be scared to use it either. So ways to win. So we showed this on the, if you're the TA sheet, you have to, you have to understand what each one of these are for, okay? Because you have to circle how they, how they won on the match sheet. So it's really important to always um, to study these. Let's say there's a strong um, head kick, um, you counted, you stopped the match, that would be referee stop the contest. Anytime you stop the contest, it would be RSC. Um, win by the final score, that's the point final. Okay, it's 12 to 10, of course, 12 points, Chong wins. You circle for point final. Um, if they win by point gap, which is 20 points, um, of course, that would be PTG. Um, if they win by the golden, they score a point during the golden round, that would be a golden point. 
However, if there's no score, if there's no score and you actually go to the superiority card, make sure then you circle superiority. Sometimes those two get confused. So if they actually score during the golden point round, it would be GDP. However, if you have to use the cards, it would be win by superiority. Or if it's by the data system, right? If the data system decides it, that would also be superiority. Um, win by withdrawal, the coach goes in the towel or the contestant just doesn't want to continue or they, they might withdraw even before due to an injury before the match even starts. Uh, win by disqualification, if they don't make weight or whatever the case might be, that would be disqualification. Uh, win by punitive declaration, once the athlete has reached 10 gamjons, of course the match is over, you declare the winner and that would be by punitive. Um, a good thing to remember, which I didn't mention earlier, is once they get to nine ganjans, make sure you clearly show them, okay, that say you have nine ganjans, make sure you're aware of it, make sure the athlete is aware of it, that they only have one left. So nowadays we clearly show them you have nine ganjans before you continue. If they receive the 10, then again, punitive. Okay, win for disqualification for unsportsmanlike behavior, DQB, and then invalid result mark. This is a newer one, which could be double disqualification. Um, maybe both don't make weight. We don't see this very often. They both withdraw. Of course, then we don't have a result. Um, or double disqualify for unsportsmanlike contact. Um, we would also give IRM. So again, um, it's always good to study these and make sure you're clear on which one you're choosing. Also, if you ever have a question, just discuss it with the video review juror and work as a team. Now we're gonna get into um, video replay. So this is the last section here that we'll be going through. Once we finish um, video replay, we'll take a small break and then we'll do some hand signals just to get the cobwebs out and let us all remember all of our hand signals, okay? And well, we'll open up for questions before the hand signals. That way it's fresh in your brain. Okay, if there's an objection to a judgment of the referee and official during the contest, the coach of an athlete can make a request to the center referee for an immediate review of the video replay. Review jury should not be of the same country or training affiliation as either contestant. So if it's national, make sure it's not your state. Um, if it's someone that you train or you coach, um, you do not wanna be the one. Remember, it's the perception of the audience. Even if you feel like with your integrity, of course you would make the right call, you still, you know, the perception to the audience, to the athletes, it doesn't matter. Um, always step away. Just ask somebody from maybe your next ring to come over, maybe help you. Or try to get someone right at the beginning of the match, as soon as you see that, switch out maybe with somebody else. Um, coach gets one video replay card per match. The appeal must be made within five seconds of the action. When we do video replay, if we see that it was longer than five seconds, we can just, we'll just immediately reject. And um, review jury takes into consideration only the action requested. So if the center referee, let's say they're asking for three point per head kick, valid kick to a scoring area or valid technique to a scoring area. Um, we only look to see if that foot touched. We don't, if there was grabbing, we don't, we would not invalidate the points. We are just looking exactly for what the referee asked. Um, there must be clear video evidence to accept or reject. If there's a judge's meeting, coach must remain standing until the meeting and correction, if any, are completed. If satisfied, then the coach should sit down. But if the coach stands up and he's asking for video review, but your corners are also asking for a meeting, make sure you bring them in for that meeting first because maybe you're going to correct whatever issue. Maybe the two points technical or whatever was going on. Maybe you can correct the issue. Maybe the punch point you missed um, and you didn't get it added right away. Whatever the issue might be, make sure you bring them in first. And then if it's still not finished, then go ahead, walk over to the coach and take his card. Um, technical issues, review jury will reject the IVR challenge, but will instruct the referee to return the card to the coach. This is, let's say, um, the video um, review machine quit working. You don't have the video. Um, any, if it's due to any technical issue of the, of the recording, okay, 
we're going to reject it, but we're going to give the coach's card back because it's not his fault that the video wasn't captured. What can and cannot be appealed? Um, you can um, request for any ganjans on your own contestant, invalidation of a ganjan on your own contestant. Um, you, you can request um, ganjan for the opponent only for falling down, crossing the boundary line, attacking after Kalio, and attacking the falling opponent. Um, technical problems, you can ask for you or your opponent technical points or points gained followed by a prohibited act. What can be appealed? And penalties against the opponent. Again, like we talked about, for falling down, crossing the boundary line, attacking after Calio, and attacking the fallen opponent. So we have to always call attack after Calio. Even if you feel like maybe you caused it, let's say you think you weren't loud enough, they didn't hear you, and then they attacked, you must still call the attack after Calio because on video review, we don't go by timing issues or how you feel, okay? It's all gonna be by video if your arm was straight or their foot left the floor. Um, they can ask for any penalty against their own contestant. This has changed now. They can just say no gamjan. This is sufficient. No need, they do not need to give an explanation. It is not necessary to ask for points back. Review jury will check if points also need to be given back and inform the center referee. However, if you're at a national level, um, and you want to make it as clear as you can to the video review juror, you can say, okay, I gave a gamjan for grabbing. I invalidated two points. Coach is asking for no gamjan. So obviously, if there's no gamjan, you're going to invalidate the gamjan and add those points back. But nowadays, they do not have to say no. Um, they can just say no gamjan. They don't have to say and add my two points back. If there's no gamjan, we will automatically add those back, okay? Used to, they had to ask for both. They do not anymore. Um, so again, no gamjan for a kick after Calio and add points back. They no longer have to ask for this. We will already, review jury will automatically check for points. Um, they can ask for technical points that are scored or not scored. Sometimes they're added in error, okay? And that as well can be reviewed. Um, again, if you're not sure, just reject when you stand up. Um, as well as not scored, we missed it. Um, points gained by the opponent following a penalty. Again, like I said before, if we give a gamjan and we do not invalidate in the points, maybe for grabbing, um, they can video review this. So an example would be you gave gamjan for grabbing, but forgot to remove one point. Maybe it was for punch. Um, This cannot be appealed. This is on the wrong page, sorry. Points scored before a gum. Oh, no, they can't ask. So they can also say, um, I want my points back because the point scored before the ganjan. So maybe you gave grabbing and you invalidated one point for the punch, but the coach is saying the punch came first and then the grab, okay? So they can ask for this. Um, ganjan given to the wrong player. This is for falling down or crossing the boundary line. Because in these two instances, somebody must receive a gamjan, either the person falling or the opponent for an illegal act. Same for crossing the boundary line, either for crossing the boundary line or they got pushed out. Somebody in these two instances will always get a gamjan. So they can simply just state um, gamjan given to the wrong player. Um, no gamjan for falling, my player was attacked below the waist. Um, no gom jump for out of bounds. My player was pushed out. Sometimes they will give an explanation, but they can just simply say gom jump given to the wrong player. Us as well, we have to remember. So let's say it's accepted. They said there was no grab. The person just fell. We'll return the card. Remember, if you invalidate that gom jump for grabbing, you must turn around and give the gom jump to the other player for falling. If you're the video review juror, Okay, and you see that this has happened and they forgot to get the other gamjan, you can also stand up and remind your center referee to give that other gamjan. 
Okay, they can appeal for phantom points or other apparent scoring malfunctions. Coaches may only ask for phantom points to be invalidated if there is no action or contact in point score. So if they are making contact anywhere, they cannot ask for phantom points because it could have just tapped twice really quick, whatever. Um, so, it, but clearly if they're just bouncing and there's points going up, definitely we can review for phantom points as well as the center referee. Um, any mechanical malfunction or error in time management or scoreboard entry. So they can ask for a video review. Let's say on the, um, we called Calio and the computer operator didn't stop the time. Okay, and they want the 10 seconds back. They can actually, they can ask for a video review. They just say for the time, it's our, it's our job to go in and look and see how many seconds or a scoreboard entry. They gave a gamjon to the wrong person. Um, we didn't realize it, we should, but it happens. We didn't realize it and then they can ask for that to get it on the correct person. Um, again, we talked about this in the golden round. If one player, oh no, this is different. If one player scores a punch and the other player scores a PSS body kick, coach may request video, re well, it wouldn't, if it was the second punch, right? Cause it would have to be, or to the one kick to the body and one kick to the head. If they happen at the same time, the coach may request video review to see which player's technique landed first. Okay, so if it came, if one scored and one was delayed, uh, maybe the other one came first, so they can ask for that. Um, failed to score a punch can only ask when only one contestant is punching. Okay, so maybe the missed timing window of two judges, one pushed and one pushed too late. Um, one judge pressed for punch and another pressed for technical. Um, one judge pressed for Hong and another one pressed for Chong when it was clearly Chong. Um, two or more judges pressed for the other player. This has happened where both hit Chong and it was Hong and they actually gain a point. At that point, we have to correct the point as well. However, if both athletes punched, they cannot ask for video review. Okay, because maybe one meant to press for Chong and one meant to press for Hong. So at that point, if both punch, they cannot video review. So this is only when one contestant is punching. What cannot be appealed? Kick scored or not scored to the body, of course, because it's the PSS. Kick scored or not scored to the face or head if head PSS is in use. Um, punches scored or not scored. So if they, if they see a punch and they say, oh, they asked for a punch point, we're just gonna reject right away. If we, if the corner judges did not score it and there was no technical pushing of the buttons, they just did not score it. They cannot ask for a punch. Um, reversal of a previous video replay decision or invalidation of points gained through illegal action, unless it's one of the penalties against the opponent that the coach can ask for. So they cannot ask for a gamjon for the other player. They cannot say, if they're Hong's coach, they cannot say, you know, Chong was grabbing. Right, they can't ask for that. Um, they cannot ask for two or more actions, okay? They can only ask for one. The exception being is if in the instance, if two gamjons are given to the contestant at the same time, with the second gamjon being attacking after Kalia or misconduct. Um, crossing the boundary line and attacking after Kalia. Coach may ask for invalidation of both Gamjons and any associated points. Okay, so because um, we gave two Gamjons, they may ask to invalidate both of those. If they only ask for one, we'll only review the one, but this is the instance where they can ask for two, um, for video review for two. If both are correct, the request will be accepted and the IVR card will be returned and the Gamjons invalidated. And if there was any points, of course, we would add those back. However, if one is correct, maybe you gave for grabbing and then you gave for attack after Calio. The grabbing was correct, but the attack after Calio was incorrect. The request will be rejected, okay? It was half right and half wrong. So we're gonna reject it and we're gonna keep the card, but we will invalidate the Gamjon that was incorrect. But the IVR card will not be returned. Um, center referee, we use our own quota for our pretended injury. So an example would be, um, you think the player punches the opponent's hogu, 
Okay, you think it's a clear punch, but the athlete grabs his throat and he goes to the floor. We can request video review. And this is a great because it helps us as well. Okay, um, let's say um, Chong punches Hong. Hong holds his throat and he goes down. If you're asking for a pretending injury, you're gonna hold up Hong's card. You're gonna pull yours and ask for Hong because you're asking if Hong is pretending injury, okay? If it is accepted that he is pretending injury, usually the, at this time, the video reader will call you up just to clarify everything. Say, yes, he was pretending injury um, to clarify everything. At that point, he's gonna get a gamjan for falling as well as a gamjan for misconduct for the pretending injury. Okay, he will receive two gamjans. However, if he wasn't pretending injury, um, and we just pocket it. Um, we can request video review after eight or 10 count, no PSS score, and we ask for the permitted technique to the scoring area. So remember, once we count, if there's no score, hold up, let's say Chong did a strong head kick. We opened up count on Hong. We want to hold up Chong's card because we're asking for video review for Chong. We're trying to give him the three points for the head kick. Coach may ask for video review for points if center referee forgets. So if we open count and then we just say queso and we forget to do video review, the coach can ask for video review on that. You counted, but no points scored by head PSS. And corner judges may also remind the center referee. So again, teamwork there. Um, corner judges um, may request to add or invalidate technical points the last 10 seconds of the third round or the golden round and coach has no quota. So on the data system, remember where the little camera is, there will be an X if the coach has no quota. We have to be really aware of this because if for some reason there is a technical points and it doesn't get scored and maybe everyone's not sure if it's scored or not, the corner judges can ask for a meeting and ask for video review. And then you would hold up the card and do the video review for them. This is really important that we protect because the coach does not have a card and we wanna make sure that the right athlete wins. We wanna get those points on there if they should. And also anytime during the golden round. We can also ask for technical issues. If you see a bunch of points going up, it just doesn't look right to you. We can stop the match and ask them to check for phantom points, um, time management, scoreboard entries. Okay, so anytime we can test us as well, we can stop the match and ask to get it corrected. Um, then of course, we already talked about the PSS during the gold round. If it's during the first or second round, we use our card, we ask for a test for them. And remember, if Chong's coach is asking, we only test for Chong, we do not test both of them. We only test for the person that's requesting the test. Okay, we use our card. But once it's the third round, we must take the coach's card. And if everything's working correctly, we pocket the card, we give them a thumb jump for misconduct. Here you can see an IVR sheet. Every time we do a video review, we need to put the match number, the match number, the round number, the time remaining. This is really important that all of this um, gets filled out because at the end, if there's any protest, um, we can go back to the match and video review and find the match by the number, which round it was in, how much time. So it's really important that we get these filled out. And the contestant, country or state, who it was, if it was requested by Chong, uh, maybe for Hong, uh, maybe for out of bounds. So they're um, requesting, um, requesting a gamjan or a technical issue. Um, Chong for Chong, um, two points technical. So whoever's requesting it, whoever it's requesting for, and then you can see we have technical issue, technical points, three points, gamjan related points. If it's requested by center referee, even we fill this out. So if you finish the match, if you just automatically ask for a punch, you automatically reject it. Make sure you come up and explain to them um, why you rejected it as well. Okay, rejected by center referee. Make sure you come up and give an explanation. Also, if it was requested by center referee or by the corner judges, so whether it was accepted or rejected, and then just put a quick note on why. You don't have to write a book on it, but make it very clear as to why 
you rejected or you accepted. At the end of the day, a lot of times they will look at these and come back the next morning and can kind of go over what happened the previous day. Um, coach must stand and raise his or her video replay card. We talked about that. They can say video review or video replay. We don't care which one they use, which term. Okay, so we will call Calio immediately. Make sure you bring the athletes back to the center, Chong Hong. Okay, bring them back. Make sure that they're settled down. They're not trying to fight. Um, you will walk over to the coach, take the card. The coach will explain their request. Make sure you repeat the coach's request back and that you're really sure what they're asking. Sometimes by the time it gets to the video juror, it's something that they weren't even asking for. So you wanna really repeat it back. And nowadays it does not have to be exact wording. Maybe they don't even speak the language. Uh, maybe they don't speak English. They can just show you a no gum John, you know, maybe, and they're showing you the grabbing symbol or they're showing you work with them, okay? It's fine. They do not have to give any exact wording. It's easier now since they can also just say no bomb, John. Um, referee returns to the mark and holds up the card with the right hand, either Chong video replay or Hong video replay. Then the referee approaches the review jury and briefly relays the coach's request. And then we turn around and come back, stand at the center and wait. While you're standing there, kind of be running the scenarios in your head. The one thing that I found is they accept and all of a sudden you're like, oh, what do I need to do now? So generally if I'm standing there and thinking, okay, if they reject, I can just pocket it. However, if they accept, I'm gonna need to invalidate the Gamjan and Chang for grabbing. I'm gonna need to add two points back or whatever the scenario might be, just kind of be playing it in your mind. So if you get that accepted, you can automatically return the card and run through the scenario correctly. Or, if, or let's say it was for the grabbing and the falling scenario, be thinking in your head, okay, if this is accepted, I'm gonna to have to invalidate the gamjan from Chong. I'm gonna to have to give Hong a gamjan for falling. So always, if you set up your mind, if you get that accept, you can run through it very quickly and efficiently. Uh, that way your mind don't just go blank, okay? Review jury reviews the video replay. Decisions should be made within 30 seconds. That's our goal, always. Of course, you wanna get it right. When it comes down to it, take the time, make sure it's right, but don't overanalyze it. If you can't see it, you just reject. But generally, by the time the coach stands, we've already started to, right, turn it. You're starting to look for the video. A lot of times by the center referee gets up to the up to you, you've already kind of found the gamjan they just gave and you're already kind of at the instance. So it makes it very quick to review. Um, after review, the review jury informs the referee of the final decision. If they accept, of course, thumbs up. Always make sure you um, do the same symbol back to the review jury. If it's rejected, they're just gonna do this. And then we repeat the signal of the review jury. If it's accepted, we return the card first, and then we come back and then um, follow the request and then continue the match. Obviously, if it's rejected, we put it in the pocket and just show the reject. The decision of the review jury is final. Again, remember they can't, then the other coach can't ask for another review. It is final. If both want to review, video review, they both must stand up within that five seconds, okay? Generally, you would take Chong's card first and then go over and take Hong card you would ask Chong video review, Hong video review, and then you would go up and give them both of those requests, come back. The video juror will usually do one at a time for you. So either Chong, and if they accept, then you would go return the card and invalidate what was ever going on there, fix that. Once you fix that one, then they will point to Hong, and then maybe they reject. At that point, you can pocket the card, okay? And then, give it back and then continue the match. So if you are doing video review as well, always remember to give it back to them one play at a time, because obviously it would be overwhelming if you had to remember both scenarios right away. It's better to complete one than complete the second one. Oh, that is it. All right, we did good time there. It is 820. 
So while everybody is fresh, maybe we can ask some questions now. Let me stop my screen sharing. Um, and then once we get through the questions, then we can just do some um, basic hand signals. But I wanna be able to answer questions while all of this is fresh in your head. I know it was a lot of information, so I don't want you to forget. So please feel free to, if you have a question, you can turn on your mic and ask any questions that you might have. I'll also turn on my chat so I can or my look at the participants in case you raise the hand. Oh, no questions. Hopefully that means I did a good job at clarifying everything. All right, I don't see any there. Let me look at the chat real quick. Okay. All right, everybody. Well, if there's not any questions, then let's go ahead and take a quick five minute break. And when we come back, then the last 30 minutes, we'll just do some hand signals to get those fresh in our brain. Okay. Great job, everyone.
Okay, so um, now my background is going to be my house as I'm given this seminar at my house. And so we can do hand signals. I want you to be able to see. So this is just kind of my living room. <laughs> Um, it does look like we have one question from Padam. Um, did you have a question, sir? A little hand there, but maybe not. Yes, sir. Okay, during the hand signals, you can either have your um, camera on or off, either way. Um, you want to do it? Let's see. If you want to just practice, but please do practice. It is it is good to practice. Let me see here. Let me see if I can All right. So let me move my chair out of the way here so that you can see. So again, this is just good practice just to get it fresh in your brain, okay? And to be thinking for some of us, it's been a long time since we've been in the center. Other of us, we've had lots of time because obviously we have many, many events right now. Um, so there's lots of events to go out and practice, but it's, it's always a good thing to just practice our hand signals. Okay, so we'll start with the very beginning, calling in the athletes. We'll start with Chong Huang. So remember, you're kind of pointing out to where you want your athletes to be. Don't have your fingers here. Make sure they're nice and out. So nice, strong. Chong, hong. Okay. Once they come in, make sure you check for their mouthpiece. Okay. Point towards your mouth. Check for chong. And then, of course, check for hong. Um, it's the only time we use our left hand. Okay. Is checking for the mouthpiece. Once you clearly see that they have their mouthpiece, then you can ask Chong, test. If they are using electronic hogu and headgear, generally I'll have them test with one foot to the hogu and then use the other foot for the headgear. That way we can see that, the, and they can clearly see that both sets of their sensors are working. Okay, then Chong, test. Once it clearly shows up on the screen that everything is working correctly, then we can bow them in. Chiriot, Kinye. Okay, then we just have them put their helmets on. It's just straight back. There's none of this or like this. Okay, we just come straight back for their helmets. Once everything's securely strapped, they're ready to go. Then of course we bring in, make sure your hand is closed when you say chum B. This is really important. Okay, that way when you say any C just that your hand is open, it's really for video review, it's really important that you practice having your fist closed when it should be closed and when it should be open. To start, it's closed, your arms nice and straight, step forward with your left leg, and then chumbi. Okay, nice posture. If they want a fist bump, do whatever, good sportsmanship, go ahead and let them, and then ends in, si cha. And right away, we run back, because they might start fighting right away. So as soon as we say sija, we just kind of back up as fast as we can. Because nowadays we're kind of on that border, that border line. So we want to get back away from them and on the border. Okay. So again, let's go from the beginning. Chong, hong. Okay, mouthpiece. Check for both. Chong. And then hong. Okay. Chiriet, kinye. And stay bow. Nice hands up. Chumbi. And then see, ja, nice and strong, nice strong hand signals, nice strong authoritative voice. Okay. Um, the next thing, Calio and Queso. So this is the one where you're going to tell from both. So for Calio to stop the match, make sure that this is closed. Your left leg moves forward. Calio. Okay, it comes down to your solar plex. When you step back with your right foot, when you say Queso, make sure your hand is open. This makes it very clear for video review, if you were stopping or if you were starting, okay? So again, your left foot goes forward. Calio. Remember, your, your, you should say Calio as fast as your hand is moving. If they're far from you, you don't run in and then say Calio. If you need them to stop, it's Calio, and then you run in between them, okay? So as soon as you need the match to stop, it's Calio and run in. Okay, don't run in first and then Calio because something else can happen. So right away, Calio. 
And then to start, kiss up. Nice elbow up, hand open. Okay. Now let's see. Okay, practice in the ganjan when you're facing the athlete. Your hands nice and in. Chong, either Chong or Hong, whichever one. You keep a 90 degree. Here, your arm should not be straight. Okay, Chong, you point right at them. Then it's your finger come to your shoulder. Ganjan. Do you know you're pointing right to their nose? Okay, then they know that you're, you're connecting with their eye. You don't want to be down low. You do it right at their face. So Chong. Gamjang. Take your time. If your adrenaline's going, don't be fast. Chung Gamjang. It just looks really, just take your time. Chung. Gamjang. And then for whatever it is, maybe grabbing. Okay. Same thing for Hong. Hong. Gamjang. Okay. So first, let's start with grabbing. Okay. So for grabbing, your arm is straight out and you pull into the body. Try not to come up high because this can be right misconstrued with hitting the face, okay? But don't come like this either, okay? So when you come in, just come nice and straight and into your body. So grabbing out, in, nice and strong. So let's practice. Remember if we do Chong, we always turn to the right, just like as if it was Chong into the left for Hong. So let's say Chong was grabbing. You're gonna stop the match first. Kelio, face Chong. Chong, gong John. And get the symbol. Step back with your arms straight. Make sure you're still in control. Don't let them start fighting yet. Check your screen. Don't go so fast. Check that the gong John went up for the right person. Okay. And once you can see everything's correct, your athletes are ready. Sometimes they'll say, okay, so fast. And maybe Chong is looking down at his leg or his arm pad. Make sure you look at both of them. If they're ready, then kiss up. Okay, then you're okay to go ahead and start the match. Um, then let's see, pushing. So pushing, your hand is straight. You push straight out, okay? You don't wanna do this. I've seen people do it twice or maybe nice and soft. So you just come in and push straight out. Okay, so if it was Hong, you're gonna stop the match. Kelio, step in, face them. Hong, gum John, in, push. Step back, check your screen, kiss up, okay? And um, out of bounds. Out of bounds, you just come straight down and over, okay? So if it was for Chong, again, stop, hell yeah. Chong, gum John, down, over, okay? Step back, kiss up. Again, take your time, don't rush, okay? When you rush, you can make mistakes. If you give the wrong hand signal and you realize it, you can just wave and then give the correct hand signal. If it's just completely wrong, they can video review you. And if it gets overturned, then you have to erase and validate the ganjan. You cannot correct it at that point, okay? So falling down again, there's really no hand signal, but you wanna rush in. Sometimes I see being so slow. Again, we're talking about good agility. As soon as they fall right away, Kelly, and get between and get the other athlete behind you, okay? Protect them. And then Chong, stand up. Don't forget the stand up, it's important. Always the right hand. Okay, I still see some people because they have Calio, they tell them with their left hand. No, as soon as you say Calio and you get them behind them, okay, stand up. Once they stand up, Chong, Gong Chong. Step back and then kiss up. Okay, somebody's trying to get in here. Let me let them. Okay. Um, Delay in the match. Again, if they are, if they're, neither one is active, you step in, fight. Make sure you do two. My camera looks really weird, but fight. Okay, not like this. Make sure it's straight. Come in and it's twice, not just one time. Okay, and then you just kind of wait. If one of them, hopefully they just start fighting again. However, let's say Chong backs up, then it would just be Kalio. Chong, Chong John, fight. Okay. If neither one is active, you're going to give them both a gamjan. Kalio, get to Chong, Hong, and then fight. Okay, just give it once, the hand signal. Remember, if they turn their back and they run away immediately, Kalio, you got to protect them because if they're running, it's still valid for the other athlete to come up and kick them. It's very dangerous, okay? 
So right away, you're gonna stop the match, okay? Protect them. And then a gamjon, tell them to fight. Okay, so anytime they turn their back, don't let them get away with that. Um, attacking or blocking with the knee. Again, that one, you just lift your knee into your hand and touch it lightly, okay? So attacking with the knee. Or if they're fighting, right? And they just bring that knee up and block and they get kicked, okay? Either of those. So if it was for Chong, we would stop. Kelio, Chong, Gong John. Bring that knee up, step back, kiss up. Okay, lifting the leg for more than three seconds. Again, that's if they're kicking the whole time, okay? The other one is if they're just tucked in and the second hop, they must be, they must extend. All of those are the same, it's an X, okay? The other one as well is if they're fighting, they check. Sometimes you'll see that, they'll just lift their leg and then they just stand there, same one, okay? That would be an X. However, give them time to follow up. Don't stop right away because maybe they meant to follow up. We just didn't give them the time. Or once they do a low kick, they must follow up immediately. Okay. So again, let's try Hong for that one. So Kelly, Hong, Gong John. Make sure your left arm is on the outside. Okay. So your right arm should be inside. Your left on the outside. Step back. Okay. So. Um, attacking below the waist. Again, once you give the gong john, you just bring that hand around to here. This one you can't make look very sharp or very elegant, okay? But make sure you come all the way around. Once you're at the gong john, just come clearly. Sometimes you just come down and then in the video review, sometimes it's hard to see. So Kelly-o, Chong, gong john, come around and kiss -o. Um, hitting the opponent's face. Again, if it was for Hong, Kelly-o, Hong, Gong John. Here, okay, so Hong, Gong John. And then kiss -o. Uh, Attacking after kelly -o. These are the two that get confused the most. So uh, the, the way I help think about it is if we've said kelly -o and then they attack, of course, that's the attack after kelly -o. Okay, or they punch. It could even be a punch. You said Calio and they punch. Okay, that's why it's attack after Calio, not kicking after Calio, because it could be a punch. On this one, once you say Calio, you get the gong jaw. This one, instead of coming to the solar plex like Calio, though, is just straight. Okay, and then an X. Okay, so if it was for Hong, Calio, Hong, gong jaw. Here, here. Straight back. Kiss up, okay? Attacking the fallen opponent, think about it as he's on the floor and they kicked him, they hit him somehow. You can't really see my foot here. Please don't kick high, you don't need to. It's just a small kick and again that X. Okay, so just a small kick and X. Um, unless of course, like we talked about, if it's the second one, we can use misconduct. But for the most part, it's just gonna be so. If it was for Hong, Kalio, Hong, Gong John, kick, X, kiss up. Okay. Um, again, misconduct is just right here, right up to your mouth. Okay. And the other one was the missed hit. The missed hit, you come out right, it's just a fist in front of your face. Then your hand is up, right, left, center. Okay. So you want it right in front. Try not to make it like a waving motion or if both of your athletes fall and you're gonna wave it off, make sure your hand comes up in front of your face, right, left, and then back to center, okay? Bah, bah. Right back. Um, adding points or invalidating points. So um, let's say your corner stand up and they miss the thing and they call out, they're like, chong. E John. So you know that you need to, first of all, they're going to yell, referee. As soon as we hear that, we're going to stop the match. Kelly up. Okay. You want to look around at your corners. You only need two. If the two front ones are already standing, you don't have to turn around and look at the back. Okay. But if they clearly are like, Chong, E John, 
Again, make sure you call out, or if it's Hong, Iljung, make sure you clearly identify who it's for. But if your corners are telling you that Chong needs two points, then you stand. You do not turn towards them to add points, okay? You just stand, you point, Chong, Ijang, and then Keso, okay? Even if it's Hong, we do not use our left hand. Okay, we point Hong, Ijang, and then continue. So it's still always your right arm, okay? If we're gonna invalidate points, let's say we gave for grabbing and we need to invalidate, at that point, you do face the athlete when you give the gum done, chong, gum done. Then you face forward, chong, yi jung. Then here, right, left, center, okay? Usually a lot of times, once I give the gum done for grabbing and I face forward, I make sure first that they added that gum jung. Once that's done, then chong, yi jung, or, and then invalidate. And then make sure that they take those points off the correct athlete. So again, take your time. Make sure the scoreboard's correct. There's no rush. I know sometimes the adrenaline gets going. It's like chung, gong, John, and then chung, e John. And then I see Kiso. And the computer operator is usually a volunteer. And they're like, oh, wait, they're trying to catch up. Okay. So remember, if you're the TA, you're the video review, we can also stand up right away. Referee, make sure they stop right away. Let the computer finish their actions. So help them out just as well, okay? Now let's think about um, the two gum johns. So let's say there was a low kick first, okay, for Chong, and then he had kicks after Calio, okay? So first of all, you're gonna stop the match. Calio, get the other player behind you. Chong, gum john, get the low kick, and then Chong, gum john, and then Okay, so, okay. Let's say Chong is grabbing and he gained two points and then he kicked after Kalyo and gained two points. You still do the whole scenario first of each one. Kalyo, Chong, Gong John, grabbing, Chong, Yi Jong, okay, and then validate those points. And then Chong, Gong John, with a kick after Kalyo, Chong. E -jong. So give the gamjan and then validate the points for the first gamjan and then proceed to your second one. And the whole time you just have to be thinking in your head, right? Um, maybe um, Chong gets for grabbing and Hong kicks after Kalyo. And a lot of times that'll confuse you. You say Kalyo and you go to, you're gonna give him a gamjan for grabbing but Hong kicks. So still, you have to think about this. Go ahead and give your gamjan to Chong for grabbing, then turn to Hong, Hong, gamjan for his attack after Kalio. And then if you have to invalidate any points, you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, when we're adding points, we point and push forward. Three they want here, okay? They don't want, you cannot do this. Make sure it is three and it's clearly, they want your fingers as wide. I kind of have a hard time with that. Or four. Nowadays, we have five, six. Okay. Many, many points. Um, okay, eight count. So let's say there's a clear. Chong clearly kicks Hong in the head. Okay. Kellyo, and automatically give him away. And then remember your thumb comes to your shoulder and it's Hana, Dul. If you need a medic, you're gonna count, you're gonna call them during that third count, doctor, doctor. Then we skip three and go automatically to four, okay? That's it. And then we come here. Once you get to five, you turn your hand out. Yase, Dogo, Yodo, okay? Make sure you're staying right with the athlete's eyes. Make sure you're saying, if you don't need the doctor, just continue counting, okay? So, Kelio, push him away. Hana, Dul, if he's moving, move with him. Set, net, be looking at their eyes. Dasa, Yasa, Dogo, Yodo, fight. Make sure that they're ready and you can ask them fight. 
If everything's good and it was a standing count, then just queso. Now, if Chong kicks and Chong, Chong falls to the ground, of course, but then he's up by eight. Kelio, get Hong away. Then you want to go to the floor, okay? Make sure you're right down with them. Hana, Dul, and then he stands up. Set, Net, Basa, Yasa, Togo, Yoro, Fight. Okay, he's ready to go. You have to remember he fell. Chong, Ramdan. Okay, and then continue to fight. Um, so always remembering, anytime they fell on an open count, I try to think in my head, remember they fell. And remember also, if the center referee forgets the corner judges, you can jump in and help, okay? Remind them. Um, standing 10 count, again, you just go all the way to 10. Kelio, and then count. Hana, dual, set, net, dasa, yasa, dogo, yoro. A hope, once you get to 10, your hand comes out just like the other one. Okay, matches over. And it's just, come on, declare a winner. Chong Su, maybe, or whoever it might be. Okay. Ending around, remember, is always come on. Sometimes you'll say Calio different things. Remember, it's come on. And then you step in and push them out, let them go to their coach. Okay. So again, Come on, step in, your hands together, and then out to the coach. When you call them in for the second round, chong, hung. Once they come in, usually you wanna start calling them in about 10 seconds before we walk in. That way, by the time you call chong, hung, they should be there by the time that the, um, it gets to zero and the match is ready. Again, make sure to recheck for that mouthpiece. They might be drinking their water, whatever, they forget to put it back in, they run back to grab it. It's okay, as long as we remember um, to do that for them. Um, video replay, um, let's say you gave Chong a Ramjan for grabbing and then Chong coach stands up. It'd be Kaleo, stop the match. Chong Hong, make sure you bring them back, let them sit. Then you go, you grab the card. He says, no Ramjan, you come back to the center. Chong, video replay, we walk up. Um, Chong's coach requests no gamjan. If you want to explain more, you can say I gave a gamjan for grabbing, but they're going to see that from the video. So Chong's coach requests no gamjan. Turn around, go back to your mark and wait. Okay. If they reject, you just simply put the card in. Okay. You show it back to them, and then kiss out. You just continue. Okay. However, let's say that it's accepted. And again, we give, we accept back, okay? We go back, we give the coach's card back. And then we just say, Chong. We don't give a symbol, we just say, Gam John. Come up, and then we do the wave off, okay? That's how we invalidate a Gam John, and then piss up, okay? Uh -huh. So remember for pretended injury, again, if they fail, you're gonna give them the gamjan for falling, and you will also give them the gamjan for misconduct, okay? If they're just pretending, then it would just be for misconduct. This is a great one to utilize. Um, I've even seen it where it's been, a, it's been a back kick, but it hit the back kick and the groin, they go down, they're grabbing their groin. Did video review just to see if he's pretending injury? They said, no, he's not pretending injury. He did get hit in the groin. However, it's not a low kick because there was contact to the hogu. Half the foot hit the hogu, half the foot hit the groin. Okay, so we're not going to give him a gamjan for pretending injury, but we still must give him a gamjan for falling. Okay, so all of those scenarios, but um, it's really good. This gives us, it, whenever in doubt, just use your card. So this has given us a really good um, option for um, video review. Okay. So. All right. I think we kind of went over everything. Remember nowadays too, you do not have to bring at the end of the match, you do not bring the athletes back. Wherever you're standing, you just automatically declare the winner. 
However, if Chong does happen to be on your left side, just step around him to make sure when you say Chong Su, Chong is on the correct side that you're give, giving the winner to. So, because if they're switched, even though you know Chong should be with your right hand, but Hong is standing there, um, that's very bad. You just want to step around to the side that he's on and then declare the winner. Just you move. Um, if they if they're celebrating, let them just go ahead and just declare the winner. Okay. Sometimes they're very excited. That's okay. We don't stop them. We don't make them come back. We just stop the match right there and declare our winner. So we kept it short and sweet. And I, we're finishing just like right before the three hours. Are there any questions? I'll ask one more time before I call Master and the Walker back. I've really enjoyed being here tonight. Um, I love Karugi. I love Pumse too. I love them both. So I've enjoyed um, having everyone and really thank you for your time for coming. Um, we're always trying to improve ourselves, better ourselves, and we can never practice enough. Um, I'm constantly studying. I'll be in the room right before a tournament. And even though I've refed a lot, I still always refresh my brain on the rules. I look at the video review. Um, I try to just make sure everything is fresh in my mind. So um, we can never have enough. Um, enough practice for sure. Um, okay, so somebody mentioned that um, they will be going to the Puerto Rico Open next week and they will be using the new rules. Um, right now, I do not want to clarify the new rules only because um, I just saw um, our WT chairman the other day in Texas. They're doing test events right now, Puerto Rico being one of those. Um, They've had some other, the Belgium opens. So they're still experimenting with the new rules. As soon as they clarify them and they, we do our first international referee seminar and we're told that these are the rules we're to follow, then I'm sure that we'll be able to do more of these seminars and clarify everybody. But we'd hate to give information that's gonna change um, or that isn't completely accurate just yet. But from what I hear, we're gonna be having a seminar in the very near future for all the international referees. And then I encourage all of us to go. And at that point, if you're not international referee, of course, we'll bring that information and try to give another seminar because definitely we want to keep everybody up to date with all these upcoming changes. Okay, so I apologize, but hopefully we'll get those down soon and we'll get that information to you as soon as it's made available to us. Okay. Um, could you please repeat, let me see. Uh, regarding the second Ganjan, the order of them, it matters. Usually I will, it does. You wanna go in the order that you were gonna give. Because remember the second Gamjan either has to be attack after Kalia or misconduct. So you're gonna give the Gamjan that you stopped the match for first, and then you would give the attack after Kalia or the misconduct second. Um, good question. Thank you for all the feedback. Again, I really, I enjoyed having you all here. Um, I'm on Facebook. If you ever have questions, I'm an open forum. Please always feel free to reach out. If I don't have the answer, you know, I don't always know everything. I will try to find that answer and get it back to you, okay? We're all a big team and we wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. So we don't try to hide information. Always feel free to reach out to me. I have no problem with that. I enjoy seeing everybody on Facebook and seeing what they're doing in Taekwondo. and. Um, you can always send me a message and um, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. All right, let me see. Um, Master DeWalker, are you here? Sir? Let me see. Hello, he is not, I, I think he's not here right now. Uh, he did ask me to talk to everybody. Um, sure, please. All right, let me turn my video on. All right, hi everybody. Um, thank you, Master Angela, for the seminar today. And thank you everybody for joining as well. I know it's uh, very uh, difficult to uh, accommodate with time zones because I, I think it's in early morning somewhere and it's late night somewhere. So I would like to, you know, first and foremost, thank everybody for joining. And I would also like to uh, invite every, everybody, all the masters, coaches, 
uh, and athletes to the 13th IOFTC Open uh, here in Michigan in May 14th. Uh, registration is open right now. It's uh, currently in the early registration phase, which will be ending in March 31st. And regular registration will be ending April 30, and then late registration will be ending on May 9th. Uh, we currently have athletes registered from UAE, Nepal, Qatar, Morocco, Mexico, Canada, and around the United States registered already. Uh, if anyone has any questions about the tournament, uh, please feel free to reach out to me uh, on email or even on my Facebook. Uh, I would be more than happy to help you with uh, any questions you have. And it's really great seeing a lot of familiar faces from all over and also, um, you know, uh, like all over the country or uh, outside the country as well. So thank you for joining. All right, then um, that's pretty much all I have to say, but I, I really, really appreciate the seminar today. So thank you. And I think there was a question earlier someone had um, if they want to ask. Let me see. I tried to look through and see. Okay, hold on, let's see. Because one was asking about the new rules. I I think so. Uh And there was a question here. Sorry, I've lost my voice. Could you clarify what you mean by push? Oh, um, okay, or... never mind. I think it, it was already answered. Thank you. Okay. okay, sir. All right, thank you, everybody. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the day or night. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. All right, see you guys. Bye bye. Thank you, oh, everybody. Hello, Master, Master, how are you? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Colombia, Johnny. Master Kasu, I can't hear you. Uh, you're on mute. I'm sorry. I'm hello, you, 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 hello, you forget, hello, you forget you also much. Ethiopia. I say Ramu. Oh, how, how are you doing? doing? Yeah, I'm good. Ethiopia is going to participate the 13 IOFTC. When you when you announce, you forget Ethiopia, my country. Oh, okay. Well, I'll add that. I'll, I'll make a post about it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Amu. Oh, no problem. Good seeing everybody. Good to see you too. I see Master White is here. Miss Lisa was here. Oh, we have... Uh, Mr. Rai from, I think, Pennsylvania is there. Let's see. All right, have a good rest of the week, weekend. Thank you, guys. Good night, home. Hello. Namaste. Open your eyes. Namaste. Good night. Master, good night. Bye, everyone. I'm going to say good night. 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 Master, bye bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master Angela. Thank you, everybody. Nice to see you. And see you soon in Michigan. Hello? Hi, Gleider. Hi, Gleider. Thank <laughs> you.